It was 1980 something and Hollywood had some of the hardest hunks. The decade of the 80s gave us plenty of eye candy to look at. Here are 10 actors from the 80s we all secretly had a crush on. Follow the yellow brick road. McGinley burst onto the Hollywood scene back in 1980s Happy Days after a casting director spotted a picture of him in GQ magazine. Most people remember him as Stanley Gable from The Revenge of the Nerds. I featured him in a previous video of silver screen bullies we all secretly loved. If you haven't checked out that specific video, I'll put a link to that video in the description of this video for you to check out. His character Stanley Gable made a return in Revenge of the Nerds 3, The Next Generation, but the movie received mixed reviews. He went on to appear in regular roles in television series during the 80s and 90s, including The Love Boat and Dynasty. I can look at you and see you for the woman that you really are. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. Today, Liam Neeson is known as a guy that you don't mess with, especially when it comes to his on-screen family. But he started his acting career at the age of 33, when he saw an advert of a theater in Belfast, which was looking for a tall male actor. After leaving university, Neeson worked a variety of casual jobs, including a forklift operator and a truck driver. What are you doing here? Why have you so quickly turned aside from the way? Who would have thought that this action hero's big break would be to play Jesus Christ? Pilgrim's Rest was released in 1978 and introduced the world to the handsome Irish actor. And in 1995, he was chosen by Empire magazine as one of the 100 sexiest stars in film history. I have my hospital sessions, Jules. I'm not 100% cured yet, but I soon will be. Back to the video in a second. Um, I just want to take the opportunity to thank you for watching all my videos on this channel and my second channel. I don't have a full-time job, so YouTube is basically my job. Uh, so, and also the best way to support me is to just watch my videos. The more you watch my videos, the more likely YouTube is to recommend my videos to viewers that might also enjoy my video. Um, so also, if you enjoy my videos, remember to click one of the three buttons appearing on your, on your screen. And yes. Just continue to enjoy my videos. In a career that spans over seven decades, Jeff Bridges has received various accolades, including an Academy Award, a Golden Globe, and a Screen Actors Guild Award. His first on-screen appearance was in 1951's The Company She Keeps, making his debut at the tender age of two. His first major role came in 1971's The Last Picture Show, for which he was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. Your first sizable film role was in Peter Bogdanovich's The Last Picture Show, 1971. Uh, I got it. Uh, I got the part pretty much the normal way. You know, my agent put me up for this um, this movie that was going down. He is most fondly remembered for appearing in Tron, one of the most iconic movies from the 1980s, playing a computer programmer and video game developer who is transported into the software world of a mainframe computer where he interacts with the programs in his attempt to escape. He is also an accomplished country singer, releasing three albums between 2000 and 2015. This two-time Academy Award winning actor and director began his Hollywood career by making his debut in 1981 Sizzle Beach, USA. Most critics called the movie unwatchable from beginning to end, but at least it introduced the world to Kevin Costner. He finally achieved movie star status in 1987 when he starred as federal agent Elliot Ness in The Untouchables. I have sworn to put this man away with any and all legal means at my disposal and I will do so. Before becoming an actor, he worked as a bus driver for um, Hollywood Stars Home Tours. The actor owns a 165-acre ranch outside of Aspen, Colorado, and has always been a skilled equestrian. He did his own horseback riding in The Postman, while other actors in the movie used stand-in doubles. Oh my god, you can't go back. You can't go back, can hey, it's you? It's alright. I'm sorry. It's alright. After several small roles on TV, Robertson finally made his big screen debut in 1983's All the Right Moves, starring Tom Cruise. He is one of two actors in this week's video to make an appearance in a Madonna music video. Robertson appeared in the music video for Like a Prayer, which surprisingly opened the door for him to play a leading role in 1993's Disney movie Cool Runnings. He also has a music career on the side, with quite a set of pipes on him and even portrayed three legendary singers. David Ruffin from The Temptations, Little Richard and Jackie Wilson. You need help? When he's done with mine, I might rent you crazy here. 
I think almost every young person from the 80s had a poster of Bon Jovi on their bedroom wall. Going strong for well over four decades, it is safe to say everyone knows who John Bon Jovi is and that the song Living on a Prayer is worthy of being ranked number one on VH1's list of the 100 greatest songs of the 80s. He was given the title of Six Years Rockstar by People magazine in the year 2000, but I think we can agree that he should have been included in the list Six Years Man Alive. He was, however, chosen by People magazine as one of the 50 most beautiful people in the world back in 1996. Making only a brief appearance in the Madonna music video for La Isla Bonita in 1987, the appearance opened doors for Benicio Del Toro. Though his career gained momentum in 1995, with his breakout performance in The Usual Suspects, he had several notable roles in the 1980s, including an appearance on Miami Vice. So why the hell was I strip search? It was the feds. Is it Friday already? Yeah, I love her, boy. You want a piece? Jump in, I love you. 21 at the time, he is the youngest actor ever to portray a villain in a James Bond movie, when he portrayed Dario in 1989's License to Kill. His family urged him to become a lawyer because they felt there was no future in acting, but he pursued his dreams nonetheless, proving that one should never give up on their dreams. Nobody's asking you, Ringo. He's with me. Val Kilmer has appeared in a bunch of iconic movies over the years, including portraying Batman in Batman Forever. But before making his big screen debut in 1984's Top Secret, Kilmer mainly worked as a stage actor, acting alongside future Hollywood stars like Kevin Bacon and Sean Penn in the Broadway play The Slab Boys. Kilmer has a reputation for being very difficult to work with and having feuds with some of the actors with whom he has worked. Even legendary actor Marlon Brando has complained that Val Kilmer was one of the most difficult persons that he has ever worked with. Kilmer has also famously turned down Patrick Swayze's role in Dirty Dancing from 1987 during the height of his career because he didn't want to be perceived as a hunk. I guess it's a bit too late for that Mr. Kilmer, that is why you're included on this week's list. Richard Dean Anderson began his television career in 1976, but most viewers know him as the one and the only MacGyver, the man with a plan, and who could do anything with a toothpick and a paperclip. Anderson joined the American soap opera General Hospital as Dr. Jeff Weber from 1976 to 1981, but the real reason he's on this list is because of his role as MacGyver. The series aired from 1985 to 1992 and was a massive ratings hit. Before becoming an actor, he had dreams of playing professional hockey until he broke both of his arms during separate matches. We got ourselves a hockey game here right now. Yeah, it's fun. You guys, um, we were a little worried about uh, the attitude that um, people might have had about the game. We heard you guys were working out, pumping up, and getting ready for us. He decided to leave ice hockey behind and pursue an acting career. And I think he made the right decision. Do you agree? Let me know in the comments. So, uh... Where to? Somewhere else. You wanna fight, I sure ain't gonna show you my d Sam Elliott made his acting debut in 1969 with his first television credit as Dan Kenyon in the TV series Chat for Defense. With his distinctive voice and manly appearance, he was the perfect fit for Western movies. He gained recognition as a character actor in 1977, and most of the roles that he took on felt familiar, but also fresh to viewers. Elliot was inducted into the International Mustache Hall of Fame in 2015 in the category Film and Television, and author Donald Reuter referred to Elliot as Superbot and gave him a full page spread in his book Shirtless, The Hollywood Male Physique, using stills from Elliot's 1976 movie Lifeguard. What's your name? Wendy. Quick bonus for you, I've included John Eric Exum several times in the past, but I feel this video won't be the same without him. Where would you place him on this list? Let me know in the comments. You wouldn't want to maybe uh, go out with me sometime, would you? If there's someone that I missed, or someone you feel shouldn't be on this list, let me know in the comments. Last week's video, the top 10 video about uh, 10 straight actors that portrayed gay roles, caused a bit of controversy in the comment section. So I decided to do a follow-up video to explain why I feel that gay roles should be played by gay actors. You can watch that video over here, or you can click on this link to watch another top 10 video like this one. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate you tuning in every week to watch my videos and leaving suggestions in the comment section.